with the game. That's absolutely what happened. So why can play a bit of a longer game? He's not going to kill you quickly. I mean, I suppose there are draws that Hero of Precinct 1 can get the job done with, but for the most part, I don't expect that to be the case. No, it's going to be a mixture of, of trying to keep Kowden off balance, uh, preventing his key cards from entering the battlefield, while applying enough pressure to force Kowden to play a little bit of ahead of schedule. From Kowden's side, it's just, can you get out of the first two or three turns without anything too bad without Hero or Thief of Sanity involved? Then when you're just trading card for card, uh, Cowden should be getting the better end of that. Let's just take a look at our seating here very quickly. Darby is the four. Cowden is the five. So Darby will be on the player. Our players will be given the green light. And, of course, when we have the opportunity to let you know about our other matchups and how they're doing, we will let you know. Uh, looks like Nick is going to take a mulligan here down to six cards again. Anthony Divardi, number one overall seed playing Salt Tie mid-range against Abe Corgan, also playing Salt Tie mid-range. He's your eight. That's one matchup we'll be looking for results from. Jonathan Hobbs and Andrew Davis. That's that Banton mid-range kind of flash style deck there for Hobbs against Andrew Davis playing Esper Control. That's your two versus seven. And then, of course, Max McGundison playing white-blue aggro, a little bit of a Zorius aggro deck, against Brad Carpenter, who is playing Is It Drakes with four copies of Terramander. I think people expect that that card to be very good in Modern and Legacy, and it still very well may be. It looks to be a standard player as well. Yep, a uh, major upgrade to chart the course for these blue-red decks. Well, Nick is going to keep and then keep that top card, and we are underway here. It's a godless shrine for Wyatt. A glacial fortress there for Nick, and now for Wyatt, he will play. A hero of Precinct 1 falling down to 18. First test spell of the game here for Darby. Uh, one of his two very good early threats here to try to generate a massive advantage against a deck like Esper Control, Thief of Sanity being the other. Discovery will allow Darby to scry, excuse me, not scry, surveil to. There's a Glacial Fortress that'll go to the graveyard. Looks like another copy of Discovery will go to the hand. And does Darby have another land to play? It looks like the answer is yes. Otherwise, it'd be weird if he put that Glacial Fortress into the graveyard with missing his land drop. Water Grave enters the battlefield tapped as we head back over to Nick. Nick does not have a land to play, so he will simply pass the turn back. We'll head back over to Darby, who might be able to get this game over with pretty quickly as he picks up a copy of Deputy of Detentions. And um, if Darby gets game one, uh, that's extremely good news for him because you see a couple cards here, like Hostage Taker, Deputy of Acquittals without a whole lot to do with those cards, game number one. Getting to cut those cards for discard, counter spells, better threats, whatever. Uh, that's a major upgrade for Darby, probably better than the upgrades that Cowden's going to be making. And this will be another copy of Discovery. And the gate will take care of that. Darby will still get the token from the hero of Precinct 1. Godless Shrine on the battlefield tapped. And we'll head back over to Nick. Nick looking for a third land. He'll draw a card. He did not find one. He found a copy of Raska's Contempt. He's also got his copy of Chromium in hand. Missing land drops. Not ideal, obviously, for the Esper control deck as we head back over to Wyatt. We'll get an attack going here for four. Nick's going to fall down to 11. Godless Shrine will enter the battlefield untapped. What's Wyatt Darby's plan now? That's the question. He's got some plans on playing a spell to be the Seraph. And we'll see if that resolves. One up here to play around a syncopate. The Seraph is in there. And Nick did hit his land drop. Well, it doesn't appear to have a lot to do with it. And uh, notably here, no double blue, so he's not threatening absorb here. That is notable as here's a pretty healthy attack from Wyatt Darby in his Esper mid-range deck. I think Wyatt, one of the very few people playing the Seraph this weekend. So much talk about Reclamation and Mono Red and everything else that's going on in the format. And Darby's taking a different approach, but it's working very well for him this game. As an island is the draw. Island does not work well with Kaya's Wrath. Neither does... Uh, Neither does Nick at two with an afterlife two creature on the battlefield. So Wyatt Darby is going to win game number one here over Nick Cowden. Nick lamenting his missed land drops. But these things do happen, though it is untimely here for Nick. We're going to start with him and his sideboard of three copies of Thought Eraser. Three Thief of Sanity, three Moment of Craving, two Lyra Dawnbringer, an additional copy of Kaya's Wrath, a Cry 
of the Carnarium, a Disdainful Stroke, and a Copy and Negate. Patrick, what do we like and why? Well, I like the Cry of Carnarium here and the Kaya's Wrath, a little bit of a extra sweeper action. After that, I mean, Moment of Craving, I suppose, is okay if you're in the market for Cry. The Lyras, I think, are probably okay here. Um, but no obvious includes past the additional creature removal. On the other side of things here for Wyatt Darby, he does have three copies of Negate. There are two Duresses, two Vraska's Contempt, two Consecrate Consume. That is a split card along with two Karn Sign of Urza. An Eldest Reborn, a Cast Down, a Moment of Craving, and a Disdainful Stroke. Now, you already said that Disdainful Stroke and that Eldest Reborn were good for Darby previously, so I imagine they'll be good again. Well, and, and Darby here making some massive upgrades. The three copies of Negate, the two Duresses, the Disdainful Stroke, uh, the Eldest Reborn, the two copies of Karn, Scion of, Scion of Urza. Uh, this is just a, a great sideboard here. I could even see Dave bringing in the Vraska's Contempt because he has so many creatures, um, you know, like the Hostage Taker and the deputy that really don't have anything to do. So I think he can be uh, even more focused in on trying to answer Planeswalkers. Yeah, I think the one thing that was really nice here for Wyatt Darby, pardon me, is just his ability to kind of shift like a Jund deck would do. Get those bad cards out. Get these really, really good sideboard cards in. Yeah, and I think it was really, really key for Cowden Gate game number one because you look at the sideboard here on his side, a little bit of extra creature removal. The Lyra's maybe, you know, it's kind of a take it or leave it sort of thing for me there. Uh, whereas Wyatt is cutting... You know, eight or nine, ten bad cards and bringing in some significant, significant upgrades. Well, our players are going to get ready here for game number two. You see the quarterfinal matches that are taking place behind them. They're getting rocking and rolling here. So when we have updates, we'll, of course, bring them to you. But for now, we're going to talk one last time this weekend about the Magic the Gathering sale that is happening at StarCityGames.com. You can save big not on tens, not on twenties, but hundreds of items. Literally hundreds of items over at go.starcitygames.com slash sale. Uh, no particular categories. There's just some stuff on sale, so you should just cruise through the website and see where the discounts are. It's all sorted out if you click on the sales tab, so you can see everything there. You don't have to search by individual card. Uh, every week, Monday, 11 a.m. East Coast time, new cards, new items will be on sale, so make sure to be checking back at the website at least once a week over at go.starcygames.com slash sale. I'm getting ready here for game number two between Wyatt Darby and Nick Cowden. These two players having a fantastic first weekend. I know that Nick got kind of ran over that first game, but for Nick Cowden, uh, I got to see a lot of him kind of in the off-camera feature matches. He was just making people look silly yeah. with his Esper Control deck. It was pretty easy for Nick for most of this weekend, truth be told. Yeah, the fear that I would have about playing a deck like Esper Control here is that, uh, you know, how good is your mono-red matchup? But with very little mono-red making its way into the, the latter stages of Day 2, uh, Caleb Sure with a good finish. I believe he finished outside the top eight on breakers, but no red decks in the top eight. If you were just feasting on mid-range creature strategies most of the afternoon, very good deck choice in Esper Control. Uh, not surprising to see a fair bit of it here in the top eight, given the, the absence of mono red. Perhaps this format a little bit more diverse than people initially thought. But I'm sure that we'll see a good mono red deck or a red-based aggressive deck with Light Up the Stage work its way in many, many a top eight. You know, there's Rakdos decks and Gruul decks to be built, of course. So players have quite a bit of work to do. But now they've got a base to kind of build that work off of with these results from this open weekend. Darby's going to keep his hand, as will Nick. And it looks like Nick's got a couple of lands to work with here. Darby will play a Godless Shrine. Nick kicked things off of the Water Grave, not Isolated Chapel, and there is the extremely powerful Search for his Kanta. Yep. Search on the play here. A very, very strong opening. Darby does have a couple copies of Mortify in the deck. Unclear how much of that's going to be left over. Uh, but for Cowden, this is the start you want. Darby without a proactive play here on the second turn, and Search for his Kanta ready to go. Discovery will allow Darby to surveil too. Drowned Catacombs goes to the graveyard. New card added to the grip as we head back over to Nick. He'll do a little search for his Conte. I'm going to keep that top card. Now here is Thief of Sanity. So this is a great one-two punch. Powerful enchantment on the battlefield. Extremely powerful creature on the battlefield. And if Darby's cut most of his way to remove stuff from the battlefield, this one-two opening is extremely strong. And Darby's going to go over to Dovin, Grand Arbiter. And I believe he will attempt to make a Thopter, and he will. So Nick Miller will join the fray as Dobin slides down to two loyalty counters. Nick will surveil here with Search for his Kanta. And that Syncopate's going to head to the Graveyard Island is the draw step. 
This feels much more like an Esper control deck now, as here comes Thief into the Dovin. The Thopter token will jump in the way. Now Nick with an island and a hollowed fountain to choose from, as far as the land is concerned. He'll play the island and pass the turn back. So back to Darby will go. Picked up a copy of Watery Grave for the turn. He will tick down Dovin to make another Thopter and gain another life. So up to 22 goes Wyatt. And now here's a Drowned Catacombs. And why will simply pass the turn back? Now, of course, this deck does have access to some things with that amount of mana, counter spells, and a few pieces of removal like Vraska's Contempt and Mortify as we head back over to Nick, who will put that Godless Shrine into the graveyard and draw a new card. I believe those are Mortifies as well. Indeed, they are. The textless variety from many moons ago. I think I might have got one of those in the mail. <laughs> you did. Back in the day, yeah. <laughs> Here comes the Thief. Looks like it might be going over, going after Wyatt this time. Doesn't matter where it's going. Nick Miller's going to jump in the way. This is Avraska's contempt to try to take care of the thief. Kind of a win-win for Darby. You're happy to get the thief standing off the battlefield here, so you can untap your Thopter and your Dovin, hopefully. And if you use a, if a counter spell gets used here, uh, that also seems fine. This will be a syncopate. Syncopate's going to take care of that Vraska's Contempt, but it's an exchange that Darby knew was possible and appears to be happy with. Yeah, I think that's a, a good test spell there. And there you'll see the Hollowed Fountain on the battlefield untapped so that Nick can cast one of his two Mortifies as necessary as we head back over to Wyatt, who's got the Dovin on one counter. Let's see what kind of play Wyatt wants to make this turn. He has drawn his copy of the Eldest Reborn. Would not be a bad time to land it. Wouldn't be too bad at all. But Cowden there playing the Howl Found untapped, really repping a absorb very hard. Mm -hmm. Unclear if Darby's going to be willing to risk one of the premium cards in his hand that way. Well, he's going to go with the big 3-4, enters the battlefield, gain three life, make you discard a card. Now the discard's easy here for Nick. That's going to be search for his Kanta. Now Dovin's going to make another Thopter. Great job there by Darby. I mean, the, the uh, I think playing a, a big play there would have ended up working out pretty poorly. We'll head back over to Nick after he fires off that uh, that Mortify on the Thopter token. Vraska's Contempt will go to the graveyard there from Search for His Contest. So six cards are in the graveyard. And Thief of Sanity is going to finally connect. So Darby's going to fall down to 23. And Nick has to take a look at a couple of cards. Nick had mentioned to us that a couple of times over the course of this weekend, his Thief of Sanities have been incredible, have taken cards like Teferi and Nexus of Fate, Wilderness Reclamation. He's kind of done it all with that powerful 2-2. Yeah, it's, it's the card, I think, that uh, has kind of jumped the most. It went from largely a non-player in standard from the previous set to uh, doing a lot of work throughout this tournament and in the top eight. It looks like Negate and Discovery are going to go to the graveyard. And now, oh, 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 three, four of his own here for Nick. So he's going to start applying a little bit of pressure this way. Which means that Wyatt's going to have to discard a card. How about that? Happy to let you know, for those of you rooting for Jonathan Hobbs, the youngster, playing a Bant mid-range with more of a flash approach with Frilled Mystic and Angel of Grace, he's one game number one over Andrew Davis. Davis playing Esper Control. And here's an attempt at Thief of Sanity. And that will resolve here for Darby as Nick will untap and draw. Water Grave's going to go to the graveyard there from the Search for Escanta trigger, which means that that will transform into Escanta the Sunken Ruin. And now that powerful land on the battlefield, maybe at its best in the format in Esper Control. Well, it's a uh, deck just filled with counter spells and removal, and that's typically what you want to pair with Search for Escanta. Mortify, attempting to kill Wyatt Darby's Thief of Sanity, but he's got to negate at the ready. So that will stop that, and now we'll head back over to Nick. And Excuse I like, me, over to Wyatt. I really like that play there from Cowden. It's a little bit risky because the Thief of Sanity might die, but 
do you want both players to have a Thief of Insanity, Insanity or neither player? When you have as Conta flipped, you want it to be neither. You want to be drawing two cards a turn against your opponent's one. That's a higher percentage of the cards being seen than three versus two. Well, here's an Elvis Reborn. That is going to resolve. So, Chapter 1 has been read there by Wyatt Darby, and now here's an activation of his Kanta. See if Nick can catch back up. Well, Teferi's amongst those cards, so the answer is obviously yes, he can catch back up, as the Hero of Dominaria has arrived. Nick will draw a card. He's found a Glacial Fortress to go along with that Teferi. The Akron native is in the tank trying to figure out the best way to navigate this situation. And it's easy to say it starts with Teferi, but maybe you want to do something with the Ascanta first. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, Teferi is so powerful and the best thing for him to do this turn, it feels like. So he will start with the powerful Planeswalker. Maybe you tuck it away, but it looks like uh, he's going to draw a card, I found think, a land. I think it's just too good here to... Uh, it to plus try to find an answer and have an Ascanta activation as the backup plan. The Eldest Reborn forces Nick to discard a Plains. Chapter 3 will maybe be read here if that powerful enchantment sticks around. This is a Thought Eraser. You're going to see a land, Wyatt, which means the coast is clear for whatever you're looking to do as he'll surveil one. That card's going to stay on top. Down to two loyalty goes the Teferi. And the big follow-up is a Karn, Sign of Urza. So Darby's coming at the opponent here in Nick Cowden from multiple different angles. He's got the Eldest Reborn that's threatening Chapter 3. Karn, Sign of Urza, going to generate some card advantage. And then, of course, a 3-4 on the battlefield as well. A lot to like here, but uh, Kalan definitely keeping his head above water on the card count front here with Teferi plus as Kanta. Karn's going to reveal a Duress and a Seraph of the Scales. Basilica Bell Haunt is the card that's getting a lot of work done here. Again, we saw this earlier when we watched Wyatt. The white, white, black, black, three, four spirit, when it, was, when it enters the battlefield, pardon me, each opponent discards a card, and you gain three life. Pretty good card against mono red. Oh, yeah. At the very least. So you got the magic number of four toughness against all their bolts. Uh, they're trying to cobble together basically exactly 20 points from discarding, so both, from burn spells, rather. So both making them discard and gaining three is good. And the floor is pretty high. I mean, it's not, it's not like this card's horrible in the control matchups either. As you can see, it's still in Darby's deck post board. If you can cast it, which Darby can, you're probably pretty happy. Here's an Ascanta activation, Teferi among those cards, and it looks like Nick will select that Teferi. Absorb also in hand here for the Esper Control player. God the Shrine looks like it's going to enter the battlefield tap. We still do have a Teferi untapped trigger, I believe. And there it is. Potentially. Nick's still doing a little bit of thinking. Okay, he says, I'll untap, search, and isolated chapel, and pass the turn back with absorb, and I believe cast down at the ready. Up goes the Eldest Reborn. Wyatt going to take a look and figure out what he'd like to get back from the graveyard. Thief of Sandy seems like a reasonable selection here. And it looks like that is where Darby's going to go. So the Pro Tour Dominaria champion will select the Thief of Sanity from the graveyard. It doesn't have haste, unfortunately. But the Bell Haunt can attack, and it's going to try to take care of Teferi. Is Nick willing to let this go? I don't think so. He'll play a copy of Cast Down. Negates means we're going to have a bit of a fight here. Absorb means that this... Uh, this Bell Haunt may not win this war. Nick will gain a little bit of life. Bell Haunt will be do will be killed. Pardon me. From cast down, here's a Seraph. Pass the turn back. 
Seraph looking pretty good in this position. As it just feels like Darby doesn't run out of threats, Patrick. No, he can keep his head above water for a while, drawing a lot of extra cards here. The Karn's going to be helpful on that front, too. And Countin not finding a whole lot to do here. Multiple copies of Teferi, which is not the worst backup plan in case the first Teferi should go, but you would rather find things that actually answer what's happening on the battlefield. You mean like Kaya's Wrath? For example. <laughs> Kaya's Wrath is found off a search for his Kanta. And that will take care of the Seraph and the Thief. Now a couple of J.D. and Clum parent spirit tokens are left behind. Those are 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creature tokens with flying. And now we'll head back over to Wyatt Darby. Is it? Got to get this Teferi taken care of at some point as Hero of Precinct 6. Hero of Precinct 1, pardon me. <laughs> and Dovin, Grand Arbiter, are the reveals. Dovin will go under. Hero will go to the hand. Pretty impressive, though, that Darby is able to keep his uh, head above water here in spite of multiple uh, Teferi and as Kanta activations. Says a lot about the extra cards that he's capable of drawing, too. But can he keep it up? Because he has to. It's hard. I mean, it, you know, you can only survive so many more turns like this. Nobody can fight the tide forever, is what I've been told, is there is the hero. We'll have an Ascanta activation here in a moment, I'm sure. Nick will take a look at the top handful of cards. The Whiff. I think it was three lands and perhaps the Chromium. It was either, it was either the Chromium or the Thief. One yeah. of the two. As we head back over to Nick. Well, no, it was not the Chromium. <laughs> no, it may be. That's a Kai's Wrath. I take it back. Draw a card. That's another Kai's Wrath. Okay. It's getting a little more difficult here for Wyatt. Yeah, I think we're... Uh, uh, the the vice is starting to tighten here a little mm -hmm. bit. Clean them up. You know, it's been a little while since we've seen a four mana wrath effect. I think, they, well, Supreme Verdict, I think, was the last one. Mm. And that was during our last return to Ravnica. I think it was Day of Judgment and then Supreme Verdict. I think Verdict was the last time we saw a four mana wrath. That sounds right. I would have to give it some thought, but that sounds right. Yeah. And, you know, four mana wraths are a lot different than five mana wraths. Do you count Languish? I don't. Okay. I don't. It was mostly a wrath, but not always. I forgot about that one. Negate's going to take care of Dovin. That's a land, and now it looks like maybe Wyatt Darby's running out of gas. I think the... It was a, an impressive fight here from, from Darby this game, but uh, I think we are at point of no return here as Cowden picks up another counterspell. And... This is only going to make it more difficult. Precognitive premonition, I believe, is its name. And drawing three cards is certainly its game. As Nick Cowden is loading up on the absorbs now. Vraska's Contempt will take care of the Planeswalker. And how much longer does Wyatt want to try to slog through this is the question now. Tap out. <laughs> well, Nick's certainly not going to. He's got Search for his Kanta. Among other things, why we'll play that land very quickly past the turn back, so Nick will activate. Tap out. <laughs> Another Vraska's contempt here for Nick. Nick will say, I got two absorbs, and Wyatt says, that's good enough for me. Nick Cowden going to tie things up here against Wyatt Darby. Esper Control and Esper Midrange getting ready for a third and final one. Something that I've also enjoyed about the uh, the games we've been covering this weekend, even in the slower matchups, you know, the Darby's beaten down a little bit, but th these are pretty slow decks, especially post-board. The games have not taken that long to play. It's been played at a pretty good clip. Even the Esper Control decks get the game done with or functionally done with a lot faster than some of their previous analogs. Remember covering you and I traveling across the country oh week no. after week. Oh no! Covering Sphinx's Revelation with one elixir of immortality as a way to in quotes win and quote the game. Those were some long matches. These have been much crisper. They have, and it's been nice to watch. Yeah, it really, really has been. I will say this: you know, we've been covering Magic you and I for about six years now. Some formats obviously better than others. Some formats have been quite bad. This one, at least for right now has been an absolute blast. Yeah. From start to finish, every match that I have watched this weekend has been absolutely fantastic, and I can't wait to see how this format continues to evolve. Yeah, so we've had the experience twice of 
where has it gone wrong with release weekend? One is uh, something's way out of whack. We have four copies of the same deck in the top eight. And the other is tournament is won by deck with literally no new cards. Yeah, that part's and bad. And we are not at risk of either one of those things being the story of this weekend. Thankful for that. That is to be sure. Now, if you're looking to play some more Magic on the SCG Tour, I've got a lot of dates and locations to be able to go over with you. We kick things off in Columbus with the Team Modern Open, a record-breaking SCG Tour Open event as far as attendance is, is concerned. So thank you to each and every single one of you that attended there. SCG Worcester, a little bit less attendance, but a standout victory by Dom Harvey with his take on Amulet Titan. Nick Cowden, why Darby? They could be one of the champions here this weekend in Indianapolis. And then next weekend, we head to one of my favorite cities, Charm City in Baltimore. And after that, we head to Dallas which is a standard open that will bring us into March with Syracuse, which is Legacy. March 9th is the Regional Championships. Head over to go.sarcitygame.com slash regionals for more information. We have posted all the venues for that, so you should be able to find the Regional Championship closest to you, and that format is modern. After that, modern Philadelphia. Then we head over to Cincinnati for a Team Constructed Open. One event in March, but it's a good one in the land. God's country, USA, you Cleveland, Ohio. What I've, been told, what I've been told, plenty of good seats available to watch the Cavs. Plenty of good seats at the Quicken Loans Arena to Flash. watch Colin Sexton, Tristan Thompson, maybe, Kevin Love. Definitely not, not, definitely not. Nope. Rodney Hood and the rest of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Then in May, a standard open in Richmond, standard in Syracuse, a modern open in Louisville, Kentucky, and then the season one invitational at SCG Con Berkeley Center in Roanoke, Virginia, June 7th through the 9th. LeBron, please come home. If you do, we'll give you I'll give you each play mat. If LeBron comes back, I'll give him each play mat. Wow. Botanical growth on the house. So generous. Star Crown Angel on the house. Lost on Citadel on the house. He doesn't even have to play Standard Modern Legacy. Just come home. I've I haven't watched a Cavs game in weeks. I've watched uh I really enjoyed recently re-watching the uh, Tristan Thompson preseason, the East Still Runs Through Us press conference. He's right. He's right. you got to come through here and get your free win. Okay. Uh, you got to come through uh, Cleveland to get that free W. Philly, you know they lost last year. Boston, they lost. Uh huh. Still to run through us. That's right. Toronto, you saw what happened. That's right. The broom. We brought it out. We brought out the broom. <laughs> Just no, not even a little bit of self-awareness. Look, if we won every game for the rest of the season, I'm not sure we'd make the playoffs. On the East, you probably would. We're 9-42. and 42. 40 and 42 would get you there. Would it? I think you're In right. The eight. Yeah, yeah, come All on. Right, we know it's something to work towards. One game at a time. One game at a time. Glacial Fortress for Wyatt Darby. Watery Grave here for Nick Cowden. I do know the Cavs are playing right now against the Chicago Bulls, who are terrible. Cavs up one right now. Listen. 82-81. The, uh. Plenty of good seats still available will also be true of uh, Charlotte or Detroit or whatever team ends up playing Milwaukee in round one. That's right. Thought Eraser is going to take care of – is not going to take care of that syncopate. I suppose it did take care of syncopate. Either way, that's the exchange. Here's a search for Wisconsin, a game-winning card there for Nick in game two. It is a hero of precinct one, but no third land here for White Darby. He could be in trouble as Nick is going to mill over – a Glacial Fortress. Play a Glacial Fortress. And his hand actually looks quite strong. So over to Wyatt we go. Does he find land three? He does not. I do not think. No. In a little bit of trouble here as the Protar Dominaria champion is going to start by attacking for two. Cowden going to fall down to 18. Let's see what comes next here for Wyatt Darby. A little bit of trouble. Does have another one of those discard spells. Yeah, I, look, I think it's maybe between that and holding up the gate. There is Thought Eraser. Going to make a 1-1. One, one. I think you just got to, if it's close, and it, it does seem close, I think you got to err on the side of trying to surveil. Well, trigger, search. If it's land five, there's Raska's Contempt. Darby's in some trouble. That's land five. This could be Teferi number one. I mean, Cowden has Teferi plus... Wrath rolled up already. Mm -hmm. It's a really commanding position here. Ooh, I'm surprised he's going to go with the Wrath. I really am. Well, what happens if you play Teferi and you plus, mm -hmm. and then you untap and Darby can... What are you worried about there? Adding to the battlefield and negating your Wrath down the line? That seems really unlikely. And now you're sort of jammed up where you don't really want to play the Teferi because Darby's still got Negate Mana up. The advantage here for Nick 
is that he's got search for his concert going, so there's a different type of pressure that's occurring. Right. Right? He's not under any sort of rush. And there's also this card, which at its worst is Jace's Ingenuity, which is draw three cards. So Nick's able to do that on his end step. He'll trigger the search. He'll put that card in his graveyard. He'll transform the search into Ascanta, the Sunken Ruin. And as we know, this is a game-winning card for Esper Control. Both sides have helped Nick win game two, and it looks like they're both going to help him here in game number three, as here is now Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. You know how the East runs through Cleveland? Yep. Standard runs through Teferi. Yeah, tap out. You better out. believe it. Tap out. That's right. We're going to head back over to Darby now, who's got some serious catching up to do. Well, fortunately for him, Calden's hand is just nothing but counter spells. <laughs> Esper Control is back, folks. Shaheen, it's a good time to be playing Magic, buddy. I hope you're watching. There is Dovin. I don't think he cares too much. Syncopate for one will take care of the Planeswalker. That one is exiled. A land here for Darby. Perhaps it is. In Drowned Catacombs, that will enter the battlefield tap. We head back over to Nick. He'll draw a card. It's a cast down. Let's draw another one with Teferi, shall we? This is another copy of Cast Down. The follow-up is an activation of Search for Ascanta. And that's an Absorb. Anybody's game. Tap out. <laughs> it's okay, let it go. Still the PT chip. <laughs> <laughs> Teferi can't take that away from you, you know? That's right. You, that's know, right. you don't have to play this out. You don't <laughs> have to play this out. Well, it'd be one hell of a comeback if he's able to make it. It's going to be real tough, though, because Esper Control is starting to flex its muscles. That's not resolving. Well, it might... It might just eat some terminates. I don't know. I would probably just counter it. Yeah, I would kind of counter. I mean, you get the tokens and everything. Yeah, the token strike me is sort of annoying. Maybe I'm wrong. It does I mean, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> but it's a fair. Going to go with the seven. Draw another card. It's going to be a wrath. All right. Well, if you're if we're wrathing away tokens like this, then his hand is outrageous. We uh, was once in, saw a photo of. Uh, uh, someone who, uh, I, I didn't know this person myself, who tended, it was a bouncer at a bar. And they had on their knuckles, stay down tattooed. <laughs> and sometimes I think about that when I'm watching Teferi run away with a game. Because people keep on taking these play action, these game actions. And Teferi is saying, stay down. <laughs> Here's an absorb. Absorb, 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 absorb. You get the life. He gets the life. We all get the life. Back to Nick. Teferi's going up to eight in a minute here, folks. Let's see what Nick draws this time. Just a couple of lands. Search for his Kanta activation. And this one has a syncopate and a precognitive mm. premonition or whatever the heck or it is. Counterspell or Ancestral. Yep, there it is. Tap out. Tap out. Tap out. Nick Cowden is going to win this match over Wyatt Darby. Two games to one. Esper control. Just too much for the Pro Tour Dominaria champion to overcome this go around. And Nick will be moving on to the semifinals. Teferi is back, baby. This standard format runs through the powerful.